Next, we have some further definitions. We say that vertices U and V are adjacent or they are neighbors if there is an edge connecting U and V in set E. And based on this, we define the neighborhood of a vertex and U as the set of vertices V such that U and V are neighbors. And again, in a similar way, we can define the neighborhood of a subset of vertices, A, and of A is clearly the union of the neighborhoods of each of the vertices in this subset A. Then we have the concept of degree, degree of a vertex V denoted uh, this way, especially in an undi undirected graph. This is the number of edges incident with uh, the vertex V. And uh, we, here we have a theorem regarding the degree of uh, the vertices in a graph. If you add up all the degrees of the vertices in the graph, you obtain uh, two times the number of edges. Now this can be uh, simply uh, proven by induction. The base case you can select as um, a graph with like zero edges. So for instance, if you have a graph consisting of some nodes, but no edges, this is the basis case. All the degrees of the vertices are zero. So their sum uh, equals two times the number of edges, which is zero. So the basis step is true. In the inductive step, what you do is obviously you add one edge like this one. When you add an edge, the sum on the left-hand side is incremented by two because the degree of this vertex is incremented by one, but also the degree of this vertex is also incremented by one. So the left-hand side is incremented by um, two. The right-hand side also, since you add just one edge and you multiply this by two, right-hand side is also incremented by two. Therefore, uh, by induction, this theorem is True. Next, we will talk about graph representations. And essentially, we are going to talk about three uh, ways to represent graphs. This is important because, as I said, graphs usually come up in algorithms. So we have uh, a number of graph algorithms to apply them in practical applications. And therefore, we need uh, some representations that can be uh, converted into computer code. Uh, therefore, we are going to see uh, three uh, methods to actually represent graphs. The first one we are going to talk about is called adjacency list. Here you see an adjacency list for a simple graph here. Um, essentially, this is a list where you have uh, the, the vertices listed on the uh, row headings or depending your uh, on your implementation, it could be a different type of structure, but the idea is the same. On the row headings, you have the vertices and um, as associated with each vertex, you just have a list. For instance, with A, you have the list B, C, E, because A is neighbors with B, with C, and B, E, with E, simple as that. B is only uh, adjacent to A, and when you look at C, C is adjacent to A, D, and E. So that is listed here. D is neighbors with C and E. And finally, E is neighbors with A, C, and D. So we have some redundant info here, obviously. Uh, but uh, some in some applications, that might be uh, easier to implement. Therefore, uh, this is how you construct an adjacency list. Let's see an adjacency list for a directed graph. Here we have an example of a directed graph. Now here you need to specify the direction. Therefore, on the left hand side on, on this column, I have again each vertex, but now they are the initial vertices. Okay, because direction is important here. I start with the initial vertex. And each list are going to list 
the terminal vertices. So for instance, from A, there is an edge to B, there is an edge to C, and there is an edge to E. Therefore, my list is B, C, E for the initial vertex A. On the other hand, when you look at B, there is an edge incident to B, you see, but B is not the initial vertex for that edge. Therefore, the list for B is empty. When you look at C, again, the only edge incident to C where C is the initial vertex is this loop. Therefore, in my list, I only see C. Okay, so you, you can fill in uh, the rest of the list in a similar fashion. So from D, you have A, E, and C. And from E, you have just 